The fallout continues after energy company AGL knocked back an unsolicited offer for its Liddell coal-fired power plant. The Turnbull government has been pressuring the company to keep the plant open beyond its scheduled closure in 2022 or sell it. Sam Johnson is the Mayor of Port Augusta. He supports plans to close the station. He joins us now from Canberra. Sam Johnson, welcome. What's been your experience with the transition from coal to other energy sources in Port Augusta? Uh, good morning and firstly before I start I actually do want to thank the Australia Institute for actually arranging today and inviting me to come along and, and, and talk with members of the federal parliament here today. It's no secret that Port Augusta unfortunately was thrown onto the national stage in 2015 with the closure, Alinta announced the closure of the coal-fired power station in Port Augusta. There's been a lot of learnings from that. We can fast forward three years now. Unfortunately, we were the first cab off the rank in Australia in respect to closing a coal-fired power station and then working through those remediation plans. There's been a lot of learnings in that. And some of those, the two biggest learnings have been is the ability to transition. And, and so unfortunately, in our case in Port Augusta, we were denied what was originally meant to be a 10-year transition when Alinta originally advised they'd be there till 2025. Uh, three months after they made that public statement in a council meeting uh, in May 2015, they actually advised we had nine months. So what was should have been a 10-year transition become a nine-month transition plan. And of course, with that, you start to learn some of the environmental impacts that also come when the power station's actually turned off as well. Now, we've probably gone through the hardest parts of that transition in respect to environmental issues and we're now actually starting to come to the other end where we're starting to see some positive economic returns in the Port Augusta mm. and those returns are in renewable energy. And so what is the mix of power sources that are fueling the electricity powering homes and businesses in Port Augusta right now? So the source at the moment is coming off the national grid, I mean, as is most of South Australia. But that said, South Australia does have a mix of other energy sources, as solar PV and wind farm, etc. But being connected to the national grid, obviously, we are able to tap into those resources right around the country. Yeah. But so coal will continue to play a key part in ensuring energy supply for the foreseeable future? Well, if you look at the projects that are actually planned in South Australia, and in particularly Port Augusta, as I mentioned about the renewable projects, and to give you an example, Port Augusta has got on the table at the moment, and some of these are under construction, some have got development approval, and the remainder are seeking development approval, 13 projects, all renewable energy, 13 projects totaling $5.2 billion of private investment and 4,500 jobs. Now, the output in terms of electricity of those projects, should they all come online over the next five to seven years, is about five times greater than what the Northern Coal Fired Power Station could have ever have actually produced mm. to the market anyway. So it's, it's clearly evident based on the projects that are planned and the projects that are underway that there will be an ever-increasing use of renewable energy to actually power homes and businesses. But are higher energy bills the price that South Australians have had to pay? Well, that's through lack of transition. So that's what happens when you actually remove something. So Blind Freddy would tell you that if you go and take 500 megawatts of power out of the market system on the basis of supply and demand, it's basic economics. You know that you need that transition. You need to put something back into the market to make sure supply and demand keeps the end consumer and the retail cost lower. Mm. And just down the road from you at Wyala, the Steelworks boss has this morning unveiled plans to build 10 gigawatts of solar energy around the nation. How's that going to contribute to the ongoing transformation? Well, that, I think, is just another feather in our cap in the Upper Spencer Gulf in South Australia, and it just demonstrates. And when you get people like Sanjeev Gupta and, and obviously the credibility that he has on a global scale, he's a very smart man, very wealthy man, when you get people like Sanjeev Gupta making that sort of investment and actually very publicly stating that he's going to make an investment in renewable energy of that scale, and that in itself should be telling a story as to where the future is in the energy market. And so, Sam Johnson, you're in Canberra flying the flag for the transition to renewable energy. Have, have, local, have your local um, taxpayers there in the Port Augusta Shire, are they paying for your trip? No, no, no. As I mentioned earlier, the Australia Institute was very generous and they've actually paid for me to actually come over to Canberra here today and actually speak with various members of parliament, both government and opposition and crossbench as well. Because I think it's incredibly important that we share the story in Port Augusta. The good, the bad and the ugly needs to be shared. And we want to make sure we share that story with anyone that's going to go through with what we've gone through to make sure that we can get better outcomes on a national policy framework. Yeah. OK, Sam Johnson, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Canberra. Thank you.